All right. Good morning, everyone. We're going to get started. Uh, my name is uh, Felix Hung. I go by Felix the Coach. I am uh, putting this class together because on a Real Estate Mastermind, I think a couple of days ago, um, there was an, an agent that came over to EXP and um, they were struggling um, with the idea of hitting icon agent. And so for those agents who are at EXP, that's where you cap and you sell 20 houses on top of capping. So I responded by saying, you know, I helped five agents last year hit icon agent and um, I went through some methodology on how I helped agents perform at a high level. And then um, that cascaded into uh, over 60 requests of people wanting um, basically a white paper on how I did that, my framework and blueprint. So um, then I took a day, I, I threw that together real quick. Um, but I felt like it deserved some more context. So uh, I wanted to teach a class about it. So that's that's how you guys have gotten to where you guys are sitting today. Um, so for those of you who don't know me, um, let me just give you guys some background and context. So we're not strangers here. Uh, my name is Felix Hung. I go by Felix a Coach. I've been branding myself as Felix a Coach since 2018. Um, next week, I start my 21st year in real estate. So I got started uh, when I was 22 years old, and I just turned 43 two days ago. I've owned my own real estate franchise. That was not fun. That was not a fun experience. Um, but I, I get to pull from that experience of owning my own real estate franchise for two and a half years. Um, there was one point I was top 50 agents out of 15,000 in the D.C. metro area. And just for those people that know D.C., this is defined as Southern Maryland, Washington, D.C., and Northern Virginia. And so we locals call it the DMV. Um, so between the real estate associations from Southern Maryland, D.C., and Northern Virginia, there's about 15,000 agents. And um, in 20, 2008, I was one of the top 50 individual agents in that marketplace. Um, I've managed over 400 agents for the number one and number two companies in Orange County, California by volume. And that was from 2015 to 2018. And between those two uh, management positions, I supervised close to 2,000 transactions. So based upon my personal production and my stops in management, I have overseen or managed close to 4,500 transactions in the last 20 years. Um, I've created a lot of top producers um, making six and seven figures. I ran a real estate team in 2018. It did a respectable 30 million, but the, the cool part about that team is they grew up to be all mega producers. And... Um, today's volume it would be 400 million today for those team members so really proud of them there some of them are leading their own teams today um, i've generated a lot of business through um, referral business through organic social media and i'm a moderator actually for a sort of, sort of another group for lab code agents which is one of the largest i think it's third or fourth largest facebook group for real estate so i'm a mod for lab code so let's let's start off with where you guys are from um, so again, about 40 agents registered. We got 26 that actually showed up for this information. And my whole intent is to just to pour a lot of value in you guys the next hour. But um, not everyone is from Southern California. So please jump in the chat and tell me the city and state that you guys operate in real quick. So we got Austin, Texas. We got Santa Monica, California. We got Nashville, Tennessee. And we got Galveston, Texas, and Orlando, Florida. Love Orlando. Uh, San Diego, California. Anaheim, California. I can't pronounce that, Dave. Uh, Saginaw, uh, Michigan. And Seneca, South Carolina. And Dothan, uh, Alabama. Uh, and we've got Santa Clarita, right up in, in our area in Los Angeles. Awesome. And so uh, here's what I want you guys to know. Um, this information will work for you. And um, you can sell 100 houses a year. But the question that you have to decide for yourself after this hour is, do you want to? Do you want to? Okay. Uh, and that's up to you. You guys get to make that decision. But uh, what you guys are experiencing today in your business is the culmination of your past activities. So if you don't like where your business is at today, look at what you put into your business the last four months. 
And if you were your own employee, would you hire yourself again or would you fire yourself? No one needs to know about you, but you do need to have that reflection. Okay. Another thing is um, if you showed me your daily, weekly habits and you showed me your schedule, I could predict your income for the future. I have thousands of hours invested in coaching and training agents, and I can tell you if you're going to reach your goal or not based upon your habits and what you're filling into your calendar. That's it. Okay, this this there is a formula to this, and it is exact. All right, so uh, for those of you who still haven't done business planning and it's almost two months out of the year, this is what I like you guys to take a snapshot of. So uh, there's a couple of people that said, hey, I, I really loved your framework, but it was a lot of stuff and nothing at all at the same time. And I said, I agree, but I hope that you understand that if I were to tell you every little step that you need to do, framework is not every single detail. If I were to walk you through every single step, I'd have to write a book about how to sell 100 houses a year. So this is not business planning, but business planning has a big part of this. Go ahead and take a screenshot of this slide so that you can do it later. Because if you're going to buy in and you're going to want to sell 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 houses a year, this has to be the start of it. It has to be a strong business plan. And you got to know where you're going. All right, I'll give you a couple more seconds to take a screenshot before we move forward. You guys, a couple more seconds there. So spend five minutes to uh, talk about life in 2029. This is what I literally tell my coaching clients that pay me $200 an hour to coach with me. I tell them, hey, go ahead and, and imagine life and go ahead and write it in possessive or past tense. So I drive A. We live in this house. It's got to be really specific and you got to own it. It can't be wishes and dreams. It can, you can't want it. You've got to own it like you have it. Okay. And then you want to figure out how much you got to make to have that lifestyle in 2029. And you also then have to figure out, backtrack what, how much you need to make in 2024 to get there. Uh, here's my rule of thumb. If you want to write it down, it's not on the slide. And the rule of thumb is this, your goal for this year needs to be at least 10% of your 2029 goal. So you have enough momentum to get there. We don't need any Hail Mary throws in our career. It's too stressful. We don't need to go from zero to a million dollars in a year. It's too stressful. Let's help ourselves out with some momentum. I believe in momentum, okay? Uh, so if you want to make a million dollars or you're going to make, I will make a million dollars a year in 2029. You have to make a hundred thousand to have enough momentum where it's not an astronomical task in 2029. That, does, that, does, that, does that make sense? Right. Okay. And so then you have to figure out how many houses that is also. So, so how many families do you need to serve to make your goal in 2024? And then you get to plan out your prospecting systems. So if you're a brand new agent on here, I don't teach my brand new agents more than three at a time. I, I, I see that that's where the, the people start getting overwhelmed, okay? Uh, but if you're a seasoned agent, uh, you may have a lot more than that. I'll give you an example. Um, I'm really good friends with uh, the top KW team in Orange County. And uh, this team leader has been in business right around the same time, about 20 years like me. And she wanted to hire me to be her team manager at one point. And when we were having our meet and greet and somewhat of a casual friendship interview, uh, I said, hey, I'm really curious how many prospecting systems you have. And this was back in 2015. And she said, 22 prospecting systems, 22 guys, 22. And I said, wow, that's a lot. I, I was expecting maybe 10 to 15 I wasn't expecting 22. So I said, like, can you walk me through that methodology on how you got up to 22 prospecting system? And she said, well, I was a $10 million top producer. And I went ahead and when I started my team, I brought over my 10 systems. And then I hired a team manager, the role I want you to come in and implement. And the team manager implemented and supervised five, five at a time. They were implementing five more at a time. And I said, got it. Okay. 
So, but let's translate that because you probably cannot afford a high five figure or six figure manager to help you implement five systems at a time. This is like juggling. Don't get overwhelmed here. Um, you need at least three, three legs to a table to start stability. If you had a rocky year the last couple of years, it's because you only have one or two prospecting systems, bar none. And you're living and dying by those one or two prospecting systems. My top agents have at least three, at least three. And we had over 10 agents that had their best year last year. I had an agent go from 180 to 620,000 in her pocket last year. And she had at least three systems that she's pulling from, okay? So you need to have at least three to six. So those top producers, guys, don't stop when the business is good. You got to keep adding prospecting system on top of prospecting system. That is your stability and that is your security in this business. It's just like adding another uh, leg to a table until it, it's no longer about legs to the table, but it's almost like a solid steer around the table. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to reinforce your, your foundation and your stability when you're adding prospecting systems. All right. Um, and then you want to plan out your daily, weekly non-negotiables. And literally, this is why if I look at your daily and weekly non-negotiables, I can tell you if you're going to hit your goal. Okay. So after today, you're going to have four options. Um, again, I'm going to provide value for the hour. You can do nothing at all. You can say, you know, I think this guy's full of it. I think he's dreaming. This is all crap. This is not going to work. You can do that. You you can you can choose that. Okay. Number two, you can DIY it. I'm literally going to give you enough information where you can do it yourself if you want to. Okay. Number three, you can do it with someone else. Uh, there's a lot of other KW uh, and EXP and Cobalt Banker friends across the nation that I love and respect. And if you're part of a great organization. With this blueprint, they're going to be able to walk you through it. It doesn't have to be me that walks you through it. But if you like me and you want me to help you out with it, I'd love to be in your circle also. Okay. Um, you want to stay at the very end because I'm going to go over the tracking sheet. That is, I'll give you a copy of it also. And that, track, that tracking sheet is vital to put all of this together. All right. So do I have your permission to make you an offer where you could possibly work with me if I blow you away with this information. So I see the yes from Jessica and, and I, I see the thumbs up from Patty and Deborah. Thank you guys so much. Okay. Awesome. So my intent is to blow you guys away with this information, but I'm going to be really honest and blunt with you. I've never sold a hundred houses a year. Ooh, uh, energy shift a little bit. So let, let um, real talk. When I was top 50 agents in the DC metro area, I closed 66 sides that year. I closed 66 sides. But I was a punk 27-year-old that thought he knew everything about real estate. And I didn't. <laughs> and so... I saw friends at KW and other local companies, Long and Foster and, uh, and Remax and Coal Banker reach 100, 150 homes a year because they didn't let their ego get in the way. But when you make big money like that and you're 27, it gets to you. So it got to me because people started parading me around like I was the biggest deal in town because I was the youngest doing that type of volume. And, and, and God served me up some humble pie. <laughs> but I've helped other people reach 100 homes. And I've helped a lot of people reach 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 homes. Okay. And so it's really funny because one of the examples, I think one of the first examples is someone that Vanessa knows. And so these are 100 plus homes as a solo agent, solo practitioner. This is without a team. You guys can do it with a team if, if you know, life is better that way, right? Because, you know, I've got a two-year-old and I, I honestly would not want to sell 100 homes today. Honestly, I would not. Now, selling maybe 40 to 60, cool. Like, that's cool. I think I can still be a great dad and a great husband to my wife in med school uh, if, if I sold that many homes. But there's a point where it's taken away from my quality of life, okay? But you guys get to decide that. I will show you the blueprint where you guys can sell 100 homes a year as a solo agent, okay? 
Um, I should also mention that my average coaching client increases their income by 200,000 a year. That's average. Okay, so um, you guys had a survey to get in here. Um, do you know, no, uh, only probably 10% of you guys wanted information about coaching. <laughs> and so like, that's cool. But if you were to trade $1,000, $2,000 for 200, would you do it? Would you do it? So here's the agenda. We're going to go over case studies. We're going to go over my proven strategy. My God-given talent is to be able to translate really complicated things and make it really simple. Okay, so if you guys saw the movie on Netflix, it's um, The Hill. It's a it's a movie about Ricky Hill who was in the Major League Baseball. And, and uh, he says when he swings a bat, he feels the presence of God. So this is not about, you don't have to have my same belief, but I am a Christian and I will tell you that when I'm coaching someone, I just feel like I'm a conduit for putting that information in someone else. It's not me. When I claimed it, that's when God took everything away from me. So I want to make sure I'm not claiming it as Felix. It's not Felix. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell you the most important trait you have to have to be successful. I, I, we're going to talk about skills. We're going to talk about prospecting and efficiency and pipeline management. Okay. So that's, that's everything that you need to know as far as framework. And this was better than the white paper I sent you guys that was two pages long, okay? But I literally threw that together because I was not expecting, this has never happened before. I'm an admin for Lab Code Agents and I post value there. No one has ever, I've never had a post that got over 60 people requesting information or a class from me, okay? So first case study. So Vanessa knows this person. So in 2021, I was asked to be a, a real estate coach for a marketing company. And this agent in a resort town of Virginia, today she's in her fourth year of business. But at the time, she was finishing up year one, and she finished up year one in this resort town with 39 sales for the year. Do you remember that, Vanessa? Do you remember this person? Maybe, maybe not. So I remember that between uh, November of 2021, when I first started to coach this marketing company and January, this agent picked up 10 clients. And I said, hey, Julie, it's go time. You want to double your business? This is the moment where we can create massive momentum and you can double your business. And so... I, I'm, I'm also going to tell you, I didn't coach her one-on-one. -on -one. This was in, just in a group setting and, and I was paid to be a real estate coach for this marketing company. Um, but an hour a week, that was enough for her to take uh, what she learned from the marketing group, uh, me and her brokerage. All It was all, everyone's effort in this case. And she sold 80 plus her second year in the business in 2022. Okay. Second case study is um, my friend, Holly. Um, she's number one agent in her KW market center. Uh, I love Holly. And the reason I, I agreed to coach Holly was because, uh, we're both, uh, veterans. So she served in the U S Navy. I served in the U S army and she posted on a lab code agent. She was looking for a veteran real estate coach specific, very specific. I want a veteran to coach me. And I said, Oh, I feel like, even though I don't have the time right now to coach, I feel called to coach this person. <laughs> So I connected, I said, wow, you sound like a great person. And we hit it off, okay? So she contacted me when she was, I think her second or third year in Charleston metro area, and she closed 30 houses that year. And she said, I had a great year. I feel like I'm capable of more. And so last year she sold 51 houses in 2023. And uh, she used to tell me, a lot of people in my market center are crying about not doing well and how the market sucks and everything, blah, 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 right? You guys saw in your office too last year, okay? Um, and she's on track based upon her pipeline now and the things that she has under contract and escrow, whatever, whatever term you guys use in your part of the world uh, to easily hit 70 homes this year. If not, she could hit 100. I wouldn't be surprised, but she's going to have another banner year, okay? And so when we look at all of these examples, I'm going to tell you, there is a framework, underlying framework that all of them all have.
And here's my third case study. So uh, here's Amy, uh, and Amy is on the broadcast here today. Amy, are you there? Yep, there's Amy. Um, so here's Amy, and uh, here's Amy at her wedding day. So her husband is a veteran. She's a military spouse. I'm here. So Amy started the year on January 11th. Amy had already put 10 homes into escrow or under contract. January 11th, almost one a day, okay? And so she ended up closing six in January. She she is has two closings set for February, four for March. She's got three active listings still outside of that, six active buyers and, and probably a dozen plus nurturers that she's working on and she's still prospecting. Today, as of at least a day or two ago, she's the, the number 100 ranked agent nationwide at eXp. Um, if you look at this and you recognize how Pipelines go. We could have gotten her to 80 to 100 house this year, but Amy has two kids that she loves. She has a spouse that she loves that is, is still in school. And she says, Felix, I also go to Mexico to visit my parents once a quarter. I love that time with them. I can't close 100 houses a year. This is probably the, one of the first situations where actually purposefully slowing down the momentum. And so we're going to cruise to 40 to 50 houses very easily for Amy. Very easily, if you guys really understand momentum and pipelines. Very, very easily, okay? Um, but I, I also need you to know that um, this was a culmination of 6 to 12 months of effort for Amy to get to this point also. But it was possible. So, um, Amy, um, I, I believe, and I, I want to make sure this is accurate. Um, so this is your sixth year, at least according to the DRE website. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm real estate for California. Amy, um, I know we've talked about this before. I remember that you told me that your best year previous to this was last year where you, I think you closed about 15, but, but before that, your first four years, you were selling about 10 houses. Is that, is that about right? Mm, 2020, I believe I sold 23. Okay. At, at, or 2021 and um, 2022, I did like 20, but then last year I did go down to 18. Okay, so I want to correct that because I actually commented that that you're averaging about ten. So you you had a couple of good years at twenty. Okay, mm -hmm. would you ever think that you could close a hundred? No, okay. not this you, quick. But you could have, but we're slowing it down because you actually don't want to work that much. You value family life. You want to see your parents into womb. So we're we're purposely slowing it down. Are we not? Correct. Yes. Okay, so I, I want you guys to really hear that because she could close 60, 70, 80, 100 transactions and she has the momentum to do so, but we're slowing down the momentum, okay? And so here's the thing, guys, and, and I, I would love for more of you guys to open up your camera. I feed off your energy. If you guys have ever picked up two, three, four, five, six clients in a month, I want you to think what happened there in real life. What did you guys do? Because I think you self-sabotage and you, you killed your momentum not knowing it. Because here's, here's what typically happens. I, again, I manage large offices of close to 300 agents, so I know this for a fact. I, I see it in their eyes when I walk down the office. Oh my gosh, Felix, I, I just picked up five clients. I'm so overwhelmed. And then they go into service mode where they, they're servicing their pipeline and they don't know it, but they just killed all of their momentum. And they didn't know it, but... That was the defining moment in time where they could have parlayed that into 30, 40, 50 houses for the year. And that is the easiest thing to do. But you may not be ready to ride that big wave, right? We may have to do some internal work. We may have to learn some new skills. But I'm, I'm, I, I believe in making life easier. And so for me, those are the moments in time where I would tell you to ride that momentum. If you picked up two clients a month, I can easily get you to 20. Pick up three clients a month, I can easily get you to 30. If you ever picked up four clients a month, I could have gotten you to 40 transactions for the year very, very, very easily. So let's throw that number out there. How many people have you picked up as clients in a month? Your top number in your career thus far. What would that be? So Ben says 10 plus. Ben, brother, I could have gotten you to 100 homes sold. 
Okay, Tommy, right now, Tommy, you're in your first year though, so you're saying one on average. Okay. Deborah, I could have gotten you to 100 home sales if that's what you wanted. If that's what you wanted. Patty, 30 or 40 home sales. Please, 40 plus home sales because you picked up four. Jessica, 50 sales. But here's the thing. I will tell you, because most managers and most team leaders were not top producers like me, they don't even know that they, they don't know what they don't know. And they don't know that they're actually killing your momentum. Jessica, you're, 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 you're giving me, do you want to say something? I'm going to give you some chances to mute yourself if you want to say something. Because like, I will tell you that when I managed for the number one company in Orange County, number one company is doing 6 billion in sales, 2,000 agents, there's 18 offices. I sold more real estate than the other 17 managers combined. And I didn't know that until a year in, and I was actually appalled. I was appalled. I, I didn't think, oh my gosh, how great is Felix? I'm thinking, what? It's not a requirement to be a top producer, to be a manager and to mentor and instill other agents? What? Okay, is it, am, am I hitting home with some of this stuff, guys? Okay, all right, we're gonna keep going. All right, so uh, we're, we're slowing down uh, Amy's uh, momentum a little bit purposefully because she, she loves her kids, she loves her husband. And so uh, we'll, we'll easily cruise to 40 to 50 transactions. So now her new goal, because she wants to build infrastructure to be able to be a perennial top producer closing 40 to 50 every single year, is we're backing it off the 40 purposefully so that she can close 40 every single year for the rest of her life, rest of her career. But she could go for the gusto. She could close 80 this year. But what's the point if you can't sustain that anyways year after year? What if you burn out from it and you want to quit this business and you 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 no longer love what you do? Is it worth it? I don't think so. So here's um, a former coaching client, uh, Brayton in Fresno. This is, he's in his sixth year. So in in uh, I met him in 2019. Before he met me, he closed two houses in six months. After he met me, he closed 17 houses in five months. So uh, this is Fresno. So 19 houses. He made $70,000 his first year in real estate. Okay. Second year, he closed 62. He actually beat my best year. So remember when I closed 66 sides and I was top 50 agents in the DC metro area? My real number, I tell people, is 58 buy and sell sides because I don't count the leases. I don't, leases are like mini transactions. So if you count the leases, it was 66. And that's what my association told me. I, I closed 66. But I think I don't count the leases. So I would say 58. This dude closed 62 buy and sell sides his second year. And I was so happy for him. He beat my best year, his second year in the business. And he was 28 or 29 years at the time. Okay. His third year, he closed 110 transactions. He was the number one agent in the Fresno MLS with 4,000 membership. It also, Madeira has another two or 3,000. He outpaced all of them also. So out of his whole area in Central Valley, in Central California, he was number one. He was also, uh, if you guys were at DXP, you know that we weren't doing top 50 agents at that point in 2021. We didn't start that till 2022, but he would have been top 50 agents nationwide at DXP that year. We just don't know because we didn't track back then, okay? In 2022, he sold 86 homes, higher price point, made more money. This year, he took home 950000 his fourth year in the business. This year, he took 850000 home. This year, he took $425,000 home. But this year, he took nine fifty dollars home his fourth year in the business. He was 35th in EXP nationwide out of, at the time, 86, 87,000 agents, number one in his MLS. Solo agent. No assistant, just a TC. No assistant, no showing agent, no, no, nothing. No buyer's agent, just him. Okay. What I told him when I was coaching him, I, I said, please don't close a hundred houses. That's what I told him behind the scenes. I said, can we, can we, can we set up the infrastructure to be your business? And can we just hit 80? Can we please only sell 80 houses so we have the 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 backup infrastructure so you can close 80 every single year, please? please. Right. Um, so he said, uh, I, I want to do it. Um, I, I told, I told him, dude, I think it's because you're, you're 29, 30 years old. And, and it's, it's like a, it's like a thing you want to earn, but I'm like, 
to serve people that like, don't worry about the houses that you sell. But he did it. He sold 110 and then he sold 86 at a higher price point. And then um, last year he called me in April and he said, Felix, I need to coach with you again. And I said, why? What's up, man? I only sold one house all year. April. He sold one house. And I said, dude, we got to we got to turn this around, man. So we turned it around. Um, last year was a down year for him. He he took home 550,000 last year. Okay. Down year, taking 550 home. Okay. Um, and we still ended the year selling 66 homes and he still ended the year at, at number 100 for at EXP nationwide. And I think we, we were cusping about 90,000 agents nationwide or worldwide or whatever you want to call it. Okay. So, um, now that I set him back up with momentum, I said, dude, what do you want to do this year? I want to close hundred houses. He said, hell no, I don't want to close hundred houses. I want to do 80 consistently at that same higher price point. And I, I, I'm going to make over a million. I'm, so his goal is 1.2 million in take home pay 80 plus houses to do that. And he believes that's sustainable in his world. Okay. So here's a proven plan guys. I mean, um, I've given you guys the white paper. You guys can take screenshots of this if you guys want to. Uh, I see this all in slow motion. Like literally it's in slow motion. I can see exactly what's going to happen. And people think I'm psychic. I'm not psychic. I can forecast very well when I know someone's numbers. Okay. So here's my proven plan. Okay. So to get going, you need to prospect 80% of your week. You need to create that momentum moment, or you can wait for it. Okay. So I know um, Deborah and, and Ben, you guys both had picked up 10 clients in a month. You can wait until that next big wave is coming behind you and ride it. Or you can, you can create that wave. That's up to you guys. Okay, so jump in the chat. I want to know, like, do you got who who out there is going to wait for the wave and who wants to create the wave? Adrian wants to create the wave, and Patty wants to create the wave, and Jessica wants to create the wave, and Jennifer wants to create the wave, and Deborah wants to create the wave. Awesome. I, I love how everyone wants to be proactive with their success and then they want to create this wave. Okay. So how you do that is prospecting 80% of your time. Let's not lie to ourselves. This is the number one most valuable skill set outside or activity outside of what I have to talk about next. It's about prospecting. Okay. I don't care how great of an agent you believe you are. I don't care how great of a problem solver you believe you are. I don't care how great of knowledge and background you have about the contract, if you have no one to serve, you're still going to be out of this business. So prospect 80% of your week, build up that pipeline to double digits. Because here's what I know. Okay. So um, I, I I can, I, let me, let me tell you how I can forecast the future guys. So if you guys closed like 10 to 15 homes a year and you guys are mostly buyer's agents, I know that you held four to eight buyers in your active pipeline at any given point during the year. I know these numbers because I coach so many people. I know these numbers. Brayton, who was closing, he, he literally had 10 to 20 escrows at any given point. His pipeline, when it was low, was 15 clients. When it was high, it was 35 clients. That's how much you need to close 100 houses a year. So you backtrack those numbers, it's just like a formula. I can literally tell you, if you tell me what your active pipeline is, what you're going to close. But here's what we lie to ourselves. And I, I was there as a brand new agent. I lied to myself and I said, oh, hey, I just picked up um, I just picked up Lance and uh, his wife as clients. So that's going to be a, a paycheck next month. That's going to be closing next month. Who, who said that to themselves before? Freaking lie that we tell ourselves, right? The truth of the matter is that you pick up a client today, it's going to be a commission check three or four months down the road. That's that's the truth. In a fast moving market like this, a listing could be a commission check in 45 to 60 days. A listing could be. But buyer is still three to four months. And that's if you write a mean offer. If you don't have that skill set, it could be six months with that buyer also. And I think some of you guys are relaxed because you, you have a client or you have some clients. And I'm going to warn you guys that those are the people that are going to close like five for the year and not realize they don't have enough momentum to get to their 20 or 30 that they want. Okay. So you got to build up this pipeline. Then you got to move people through it. It takes skill to move people through the pipeline. Okay. 
And so here's how I operate as a coach and trainer, just so you know, if your buyer or sellers were watching this, they would be okay with all of the information we're going over. And so I want to live in integrity. And so I don't like coaching systems where if my buyer or my seller were listening behind my shoulder, they would be appalled with information that I'm using to sell them or to get them as a client. And there's systems out there like that. Okay. So you move people through the pipeline, then you reload the pipeline. And here's what you need to know from this slide. So if you guys want to sell one home a month and you're mostly buyer's agents, you're going to have to have a pipeline of hot buyers, four to six hot buyers. I know this, I know these numbers. And if they're, if they're crappy buyers, you may have to have a pipeline of eight to 10 crappy buyers. Okay. And you're going to have to get one into escrow under contract, ratified, whatever the term you use in your world. I'm going to use in escrow just because I'm in California. So when I say that, just know that that means accepted offer, ratified, all the same thing. Okay. And if we imagine this, right, you have, you hold a pipeline of four, you get one to escrow, you, you pick up another client, right? That same month. So you put one into escrow, you reload loaded one and you still have four. And then you put one, another one into escrow and you reload another one. That will get you to sell 10 to 12 houses for the year. If you have listings, the number is less. You, you, you can hold less of a pipeline. So for listings, it could just be two listings begets one escrow or one under contract run ratified for the month. And you can roll with a smaller pipeline. But typically we have a blend of buyers and sellers. And some of you guys who are newer mostly deal with buyers. And guys, the commission checks all cash the same. I just want my people doing more business and making more money, not necessarily having any specific type of business. Okay. But we also focus on listings. So the most important trait outside of prospecting is, what do you guys think it is? Jump in the chat. Tell me what you guys think the most important trait outside of prospecting. Carol says grit. Ben says follow up. Felice's consistency. These are all amazing answers. Michelle saying follow up. Christina saying conversion. Jessica saying systems. The number one most important trait is attitude. Your attitude. Your mindset and your attitude is the number one trait. Okay. And so this is some homework. Again, I don't have enough time to go over this with you, but uh, this is what I, we go over. You need to write down what beliefs are holding you back. Write down everything that you believe is holding you back. And have a plan to solve it. Why do we keep dancing around these, these beliefs that we know are holding us back? Write it down on paper. Start the process of resolving them. Okay. Real, I'm, I got to go fast because I, I want to make sure that we end on time and, and I'm providing a lot of value to you guys. So also, right? Why aren't you a top producer or why aren't you doing the production that you want to do? Why? What's holding you back mentally? What is a blockage? Let's write it out and let's then address it. So spend some time here, guys. The more time you invest in this self-reflection, the faster you will go. But you got to be honest with yourself. These are not easy things to do, guys. You literally, I, I, here's, here's what I'm doing. I'm putting a mirror in your face and saying, look, look, look at yourself honestly. Okay. Why aren't you guys selling multi-million dollar houses? So I sold my first seven figure home at 23 years old. And then I thought I wanted to be a luxury agent. I was in a Remax office with the number one uh, Remax agent in the world at the time. And so I thought that that was my path. And um, I'll tell you today, I don't focus on luxury. But there was a time that, that that's all I focused on was being a luxury agent. And so I think in my career, I've sold maybe 15 to 20 houses over seven figures somewhere. Um, but why aren't you selling multi-million dollar homes? I will tell you it's because uh, 
I'd rather dress casually and that does affect it. I would also tell you that people judge. And, and even though I'm Southern California, I have tattoos. I have a, I have a three quarter sleeve and a chest plate. I've got a dragon on my chest and people judge. And I remember that people didn't like the tattoos and I lost the listings, two, three, $4 million listings because of that. And so um, I need to cover it up or I need to remove it if I really want to play in the space. Like, can I break through barriers? Yes. Can you be a trailblazer? 100%, 100%. You can. But at 43 years old, I, I'm no longer wanting to be that trailblazer. I really want the easy, fast business. Like that, that's it. Like, I just want to serve people. I don't really care the space I'm serving people in. Right. So you guys, if you want to sell multi-million dollar houses, you need to deal with why you're not selling multi-million dollar houses. Here's some signs that you have, uh, may have some unresolved trauma or unresolved conflict in your life. Who procrastinates a lot? Who can't stay on task and can't focus? Who feels like they have bad luck in their life? Who has a lot of anger issues? Who has poor self-esteem and confidence issues? Who feels shame, guilt, or worthlessness? Which one of you guys abuse drugs, alcohol, or even caffeine? Who gets easily overwhelmed? Who feels like they are in depression? Who cries a lot and doesn't understand why? Who's given up where you don't even want to try because you just don't want to fail again? Do you guys know that that's a lot of unresolved conflict in yourself? And, and actually, that's where you probably need to do the work. But you know where you spend the time? A better plan. Better at conversion. But do you know you energetically, you're not going to attract the business unless you focus on Clearing out the skeletons in your closet. I'm just saying. And then these are the needed education and skill sets that you need to have to reach the 100 homes a year. You must have a mean buyer consultation. I mean, we're not batting 1,000, but we're batting close to it. I mean, I would tell you that um, I've only lost maybe one or two buyer appointments. That should be really easy money. Um, so... If you're losing buyers to other people, like maybe my team, you got to revisit why are, where am I not being able to compete and, and win buyers, okay? Then it's a listing presentation. And any, any decent listing agent is closing at a 50-50 point. So they go on two listings to get one of them. If you're closing less than 50-50, we've got a problem with the process, okay? And yes, there are people that prayed around that they're closing 70, 80, 90%. Awesome. That's amazing. Those are amazing numbers. Um, there was a point in my career I was closing over 90%, but now as competition has gone up and now as opportunities have gone down, it's 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 typically about every other that I, I pick up. And anything over 50 is a decent ratio, okay? Um, fixing transaction problems. Do you guys know how to fix transaction problems? Do you guys know how to make sure no transactions actually have problems? Are you proactive in actually making sure the, your file is clean? Do you understand your state contracts? Do you understand how your buyer can cancel? Do you understand when your buyer is in default in your state? Do you understand the prioritization of tasks and what's most important in your day? Are you really good at prospecting? And are you really focused on relationship building? So these are some of the skills that you need to have to be this top producing juggernaut closing 100 plus houses a year. Okay. And then we talked about the prospecting guys. And it's just like juggling. Start with three. Like who likes Cirque shows in Vegas like I do, right? You know, they're, they're, I don't care if they're juggling balls or chainsaws. They always start with three. Do you guys know that they every juggler always starts with three balls? And then what do they do after they get comfortable juggling three balls? They add a fourth and a fifth and a sixth and a seventh. And that's what you guys need to do for your prospecting systems. But you guys go out there and you want to go 10 wide and, and have 10 systems at a time. And, and none of them are producing business. You're overwhelmed. And you're strapped for cash and you're just melting down because you're doing too much. Be an expert at three, then add a fourth and add a fifth and a sixth and, and so forth. Efficiency. Woo. Um, if you're going to close this and you're going to, you're going to have in escrow under contract, 20 homes at a time, you better, 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 better be really efficient with your schedule, with your 
pipeline management, with your processes, you better have checklists for everything. And you better have surveys that you have to help you get feedback to fix and better your systems and processes. Okay, so let's talk about these really quickly one by one. Um, here, here's how you do it so that you don't lose focus of your family. Your personal non-negotiables are the first thing I tell my coaching clients to schedule in their week. What are your personal non-negotiables? So mine are um, dropping off my son at his Montessori and picking him up. Those are my personal non-negotiables per day. And then my wife and I try to spend uh, an hour of quality time together during the day also. So those are my non-negotiables for the day. And then um, if you guys go to church or you or you go, you go to your temple or you go to fill in the blank place of worship, that may be a non-negotiable. Okay. But think about your personal non-negotiables, put them in your calendar. Then you have to have your business non-negotiables non and your business non-negotiables should include education, but don't over-educate guys. You don't get paid to be a professional student of real estate. Okay. So I'll give you guys some guidelines. Um, new agents don't spend more than 10 hours. That's already a quarter of your 25% of your week. Do not be a professional student. Most of my top producers, I recommend two to five hours of education per week. Even the ones making half a million dollars or more. They, I still say, make sure you're getting at least two hours of education a week, if not upwards of five hours, but don't, they don't have time in their schedule. You guys will not have time in your schedule for more than five hours maximum when you're closing that type of volume. Okay, so education. Number two, prospecting. Non-negotiable. Prospecting can also include lead follow-up. So we, we group them together. And then taking care of your transactions. There's only so many things from a business standpoint, but you got to do it consistently. Um, we have defined processes. I think that make it a lot more streamlined as far as a real estate process. Um, you need to have checklists. So guys, you know he, what I hear from low producers? They say things like, I remember everything. It's all here. And I will tell you after managing close to 300 agents in an office, I would see you and not remember your name. And you're in my office. Do you know why? You don't realize as a manager, I have 300 agents. I have 200 emails when I walk in every single morning at nine o'clock. I've got to put out fires. I'm also meeting and recruiting people. I need to have a thousand names in my head. And sometimes I'll say for a second and I'll, 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 I'll call you something else or I'll just use a general term because I literally blanked out and forgot your name for a second. Okay. You guys realize that? And when you guys are stressed, that's what's going to happen in your life and your business too. So why are you guys spending valuable energy trying to recall everything? Do not use your recall memory. It's draining you. It's draining you. So have a checklist for everything and just go down the checklist and check boxes off. And if the more checklists you have, the less recall memory you need, the more that can be refocused on being present for your family, prospecting, follow-up, not forgetting details of transactions, guys. Hello. And then surveys, guys, because we always need to get better. So uh, like at least for my EXP organization, I send out quarterly surveys um, and I, I like to try to figure out like, do, are, do you guys like what you're getting? What, what do you want to see change and so forth, right? So you should be sending out surveys, uh, customer satisfaction surveys to all of your clients to see what they like, what they didn't like and what you can improve. And guys, be ready for the feedback. Would you rather know or not know? Would you rather know or not know? And so you guys can take a picture of this. I don't have time to go over it because we're in our last 10 minutes because I have a 1230 phone call. I want to be also respectful and cognizant of your time. But this possibly could be a million dollar schedule right here. And so what I teach my organization is we got to prospect every single day on a weekly basis. We have to role play our presentations and we have to deal with uh, objection handling. Um but prospecting is still the most important thing that we're doing. Okay, so there you go. All right, pipeline management. This is the, the I think, funnest, funnest part. Um, so I'm going to pull up my tracking sheet and I'm going to go over with you how I do pipeline management. It's very, very simple, guys. Okay, so here's my tracking sheet. And if you guys stay till the end, this is what you guys will get emailed to you guys so you don't have to recreate this. 
Okay. So first the, the uh, legend here. Okay. So yellow is a prospect. Green is a client. Orange is a client or prospect that is six plus months away from transacting or doing something. Okay. So you put everyone in. Okay. You put their source. So you know where your business is coming from and where you need to spend your time. Okay. Then you put their motivation from one to five. One is bad. Five is great. Okay. But I'm not going to care what they say. I'm going to I'm going to care what they do because a lot of people will say they're motivated and they're really not motivated, guys. OK, so um, a a client coming into Orange County from Houston, Texas, that wants to buy a house and saying, I want to look this weekend is not motivated. But you guys will stop what you do to show that person houses. I bet all of you guys would literally rearrange your schedule for that Houston buyer. And I will not. I will not. OK, unless they go through a consultation with me. I will not. I'm not going to jump through hoops for an out of towner. Okay. So motivation and then time frame. So time frame again, five is as soon as possible. Um, this is a lot easier to look at. So instead of you guys putting like three months, six months, like stop that crap. Just put one through five. One is really slow, right? That's why you see, hey, the ones that are six to 12 months out from doing something, they're one and two. Okay. And so five means like right now. I want to know their living situation so because I'm going to be the quarterback of the transaction and I may need to be managing other pieces to this. Okay. And so uh, I want to know if they live with parents or family. I want to know if they rent and, and when their rent is renewing. And I always, always ask the question, so, so what's going to happen if we don't get you into a house before the renewal time? Are you going to re-sign a lease? Or are you committed to home ownership? And are you going to negotiate a month to month or move in with family? If they say, I'm going to renew my lease, I'm going to say, cool, awesome, thank you so much. I'm putting them at the end of my pipeline. But you guys will service those people like they're a rock star number ones. Okay. And then some of you guys also, because they own a house and it's also a listing, you guys will mismanage your pipeline by going to the money instead of going to who you should service first. Okay. And then financing. I don't care what it is. FHA, VA, conventional, USDA for you guys in rural areas, but what it is. Okay. Marking conditions. Marking conditions is this. How well do you understand our marking conditions in my current market? Okay. So, so someone's from Galveston, Texas. So let's say you guys are seeing multiple offers and it's going for on average 5% over list price. 5%, let's say. Okay. Are they going to listen to you and write to that 5% over list price or over value? And if they're not, that's like a, a one or a two. If they will, that's a five. That's how market condition works. If everything's getting multiples and selling for higher than value and they have to remove appraisal contingency or, or cover an appraisal gap and they're not willing to do that, then they're going to be a one, two, or three. Uh, so Deborah's is asking, where do you get those stats? Uh, you look on the MLS and you're able to sort of pull like the last two or three months and you sort of pull like, like asking price to close price. And, and, um, if I really want to go down in, in the nitty gritty, I'll also cross check the prices to see, did it actually just sell at value or did it sell over value at the time? So I'm doing a retro search even, this is very, like, it's very complicated. That's a class in itself, but I'm, I'm pulling stats and I'm analyzing the stats to see, like, where is that, right? So I'll, 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 I'll compare the last time I helped out a buyer. They were a director for a local uh, utility company. They, they are the ones that, that negotiate billion dollar contracts for them. And this is in Fountain Valley, California, okay? And I was looking at the MLS for like list price versus sold price. The Delta was for something renovated, like my client wanted, the cheapest they could get into that house was 70,000 over list price. The average was 130. And it went as high as 170 over list price. So I said, hey, by the way, guys, this is the Delta. If you guys really love this house, it's going to go up 70 to $170,000. So just be prepared. So those people that will listen to that and, and literally, I show them the stats. I don't try to convince or sell them on the stats. I show them the MLS and I show them the stats. If they follow suit, then they're a four and a five. A three is someone that's writing for maybe 40,000 over list price. That's a three. Hey, maybe we have a shot, but that's not where most of the, the, the things are following, right? So there's marking conditions. Did you do a, a listing or buyer consultation? Just yes or no. 
And I'm not talking about between showings. I'm talking about like either on Zoom or either in your office or either at their house or either at a coffee shop. I'm not talking about maybe piecemealing the information together between 10 showings in between houses. That is not a buyer consultation, guys. But some of you guys consult that way because I used to also. And you guys are literally creating your own fires to put out. So here's how it goes. I don't have any transaction problems because I spend three hours with my buyers up front. Three hours, guys. But here's how it goes. I know as a top producer, I would rather spend three hours up front with my buyer than have one fire that I have to put out. One fire means I have to mismanage my day, mis rearrange my day because one fire is five hours of my time. One fire. I'd rather invest three hours up front. That's your choice, guys. Okay. Then on a weekly basis, you guys have to reorder your pipeline. And this is the game that you play when you're reordering your pipeline. Who is next to open escrow or get under contract or ratify? Not next to close, guys. Who's next to open the escrow? And then basically, it's a game of managing that pipeline of how many opens and how many closes you have every single month and reloading. Is this starting to make sense now on how it's very easy? This is very, very easy improvement on how to get people there. And then every single week, you have to reorder it every single week. And you got to keep prospecting or you got to throw money at it. And it's so funny because like you're going to pay one way or the other. So you're going to pay for efficiency and scaling and experience, right? And coaching, or you're going to figure out yourself. I think it's really painful to figure out yourself. I'd rather pay someone. Right. I was, I was having this conversation uh, with, with a friend right before I jumped on here. And my thought is, man, I'd love to coach with Tony Robbins one day and, and pay him $150,000 a month. And some of you guys think that that is crazy. But I'm like, I hope I make 50 million a year. So 150 is nothing in my, in my book, whatever. Let me give Tony the money. Okay. So five years of success, mindset, goals, modeling, modeling people that have done it, systems and perseverance guys. And so here's how it look. If you guys want to work with me, I don't have any more slots for one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. I only have 10 slots a month. That's, that's 10 hours of my week that I coach one-on-one -on -one. outside brokerages, Compass, KW, Cobalt Banker. I coach all these people. I don't have any more one-on-one. -on -one. I would be honored if you guys want to be on the wait list and I can send you that information if you guys want to be on that wait list. Okay. You can DIY it. You don't, you don't need me. I give you enough from here where you guys can DIY and do this, put this, this together yourself. You can hire another coach. I, I respect and I'm friends with a lot of other coaches. And, and if you have someone that, that knows what they're doing, they can walk you through that process. Okay. If you want to join me, I think this link is working, but uh, let me actually go to it. I just forwarded it on my. Uh... This is for, okay, so it's working. Okay, so if you go to joinfelixthecoach.com, there'll be a questionnaire that you fill out and then I can contact you about the group coaching product. It's $150 a month for four one-hour sessions. $150 a month for four one-hour sessions. And don't wait until the one-on-one is, is available, guys. Jump on the group coaching and I'm able to better your life, better your business that way. Join Felixacoach.com. Join Felixacoach. Uh, ben, you want the last slide? Like this one, Ben? Join Felixacoach.com is the link here. You mentioned um, a white paper. I didn't receive it. Uh, I can email it to you. So, yeah. Um, Suzanne, please uh, make sure you send me a message on Facebook, and I'm happy to forward it to you. Okay. Um, I'm going to open up to, I, I don't actually have time for questions. So uh, any questions here? Uh, I, I guess I can be five minutes late for my 1230. Any questions here, guys? Questions about any of this? I'd be honored to work with you guys. Uh, my, my goal and my mission is to help a thousand agents to make a sustainable six or seven figure income for their families. And hopefully you guys found value in the last hour that you guys spent with me. And if you guys are EXP and, and you guys are voting for a speaker for EXP con, um, love to speak at EXP con also. So you guys can vote for me and, and I'd love to be on stage and share what I know. All right. Thanks guys.
Jennifer, we have our listing presentation template on our team group. Just go to the team group. It's under files. Any questions, guys? Questions, questions? Was that was that fairly clear? Was that clear? Do you guys feel more comfortable about the process? Okay, thanks for your time, guys. Have a great, amazing day.